Welcome back to the Arabella Boathouse. Last week, we asked you to check out our Patreon page to help Steve support the very large crew he's hired to help finish all the critical work required to get this boat in the water on schedule. Huge thanks to everyone that started or upgraded their monthly support. And even if it's only until launch, it would be a huge help to the project right now. In other housekeeping, if you're in the area on April 29th through the 30th, you can participate in the final step in fairing the hull. The longboarding party will be both of those days from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you just want to come by and buy some wood and watch the suffering, there will be plenty of both available. Just make sure you RSVP using the link in the video description. We left off last week with Ross oiling the deck that he had spent weeks repairing the pitch lines on. Oh god. The mosquitoes are back. Oh no! And if you happen to be working with raw linseed oil, make sure you dispose of the rags carefully as they can under the right conditions spontaneously combust. And Steve keeps a bin out in the yard for this reason. I'm Ross. I currently live in Maryland, and I've been up here probably a handful of times, maybe four or five times. Uh, this isn't going to be my last time. I uh, can barely remember starboard and aft. Port. No, port and starboard, that's what it is. Uh, so yeah, not a boat person at all, but uh, I like building things, uh, working with my hands, so just always trying to get time to come up here to help Steve out and finish his project and get this thing in the water. Uh, the first week uh, or week and a half was really more varnishing and pitching, and pitching is not one of the fun jobs, but uh, it needed to be done, so we made a lot of good progress on improving the shape of the deck and how many gaps and bubbles there are in the pitch. It's one of those things where you like, imagine you have a brand new black car and there's just a little bitty scratch on it, and you see that one scratch and then you see another scratch and another scratch and another scratch. And it's the same concept, we would see a little bitty bubble or a little bitty gap, and go through and fix it all. And then you would look again and be like, did we not see that one? Did we not see that one? I've got a good amount of experience with pitching now. I wouldn't mind sharing that with anyone if they want to know. Uh, temperature is very important with everything. So I'll be back here in the uh, middle of May so that I'll be able to help out with the last week before the boathouse comes down and then I'll, I'll stay until launch. With the workspace freed up on deck, Steve got everything ready for mounting the cockpit nav station first installing this little skylight from Victoria, and then installing the fresh air vent that's incorporated into the box with the nav gear. And down below, Satchel pressed forward with the routing of the battery cables and worked out where he wanted them to enter the box that Aiden made. I wish I had a bent iron. Yeah? What's that? Like Just hook. shaft that's bent over. Yeah. So you can cock right up against something without destroying your knuckles. It's glue day, Akiva. You want to do some epoxy work? Get your paws dirty? or take a nap in the sun. Your call. Nap in the sun it is. So this is getting glued on today? Yep. Nice. Yeah, it's gonna be warm today, tonight, and tomorrow. Yeah, it's almost 40 degrees now. Yeah, and the... Uh... And there's so, a heater in the boat. Heater in the boat. So the boat in this temperature is just a huge cold sink. 
So if we can get the inside of the boat warmed up, we'll be in good shape. Final install of the lights. Yep. I'm gonna get it all tightened down, take off these nuts, cut down the bolts, put on the acorn nuts, be done with it. Beautiful. Glue on some trim, put them in. What is this piece for? Uh, this is going to be for the main sheet traveler. Okay. We'll let that just ooze and we'll come snug it up again. And we've mentioned it quite a lot, but in case you're wondering what glue Steve is using, it is 4200 from 3M, which is a marine grade adhesive and sealant. Stuff's very hard to clean up. Yeah. yeah it seems all right. Yeah. 
And meanwhile, Satchel was upstairs charging the lithium house batteries before they were installed. 13 volts. This guy is a great little charger. Bluetooth connectable, can run it as a power supply. It's been really nice, but running it at 15 amps, it's hot. Yeah. And this could take 15 amps for approximately 15 hours. Yeah. So we're not gonna do that full time. <laughs> New battery cables. It's actually really easy to make them because they all have to be the same length so that the resistance between each battery is as close to equivalent as possible so the batteries get loaded evenly. Which means I found out which was gonna be the longest one, figured out the cable route, and then cut the rest to be identical. And Perfect. then I'll have to figure out how to route them neatly. Yeah. But the lengths are fixed. And I just cut a hole for the battery switches in the nav bulkhead. Yeah. Steve's kind of in the way, but. What else is new? What else is new? <laughs> well, we're getting close to having a full electrical system. Power coming from the batteries, going to the nav station, distributing to the loads. Mm -hmm. Scott's prepping the floor hatch. Getting the bolts shorter. And it should be ready to install this afternoon. It's good to know we can stand on the nav box, alright? This is the same stuff that's holding the house top down? Yeah, well, I mean, there's also bolts. Well, I mean, yeah, but, but I mean... It's what seals it. Seals in it, yeah. Yeah. So we got these trim pieces for the four hatch. Gotta go in here. They slightly don't fit. So bring them out over here. Get my 
nifty little sander. Bring it back over. The tape to show that it goes up. And there we go. It slides right in. No gaps. Looks good. That's the last one. All the rest of them are done. It's a little tight in here. That should all be a pretty flat plane. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That should work. I think I set them at about 20 and a half inches front from the, uh, or back from the, the front of the house top. But yeah, they can move. Depending on things on the inside. All right. Great. Right. Okay. You can see down inside. That's where the vent's gonna go down. There's gonna be probably about a two inch tube that goes below that little wall that I put in. And then coming out of the house top here is gonna be a vent stack here. So the theory is you know, the water might be able to get down there. Can't get past that wall that I put in and the air could just pass, which now it reminds me that I need to do drain holes at the side. Yeah. And I think the idea was that drain holes would go in after everything was scribed. So in the event that the wave comes over the top or anything else comes down the vent stack, mm -hmm. it'll drain out the side. Mm -hmm. But not drain across where when the dam the wave is. Comes over the top. No, in the event that a wave comes over. <laughs> Rare event. Ross and George just took off. George will be back in a week, and Ross will be back in a month. Uh, Satchel is also gone for the next week, but we somehow managed to convince him to start working three days a week. He was only supposed to come for the month, but now we got him three days a week until launch, which is awesome. He's a huge help. Uh, everyone's been hardly working. I'm pretty much doing everything these days. I mean, look at it. I'm just kidding. Uh, it's been awesome having everybody working on the boat and so many different projects going on at the same time. Ross and George went through and cleaned up all the deck and got the pitch done. And now we're on our third coat of filtered raw linseed oil on that. Scott's got the four hatch in with the deadlights and is working on the trim and some finishing touches in that and the aft one. He's made great strides on the gab rails. Uh, I put the tow rails here on and I'm really happy with how they look and how they seem to be functioning so far. They're definitely not traditional but I like that they drain down the whole length of them. Water can run off the deck real easy without having to run down the deck. And I also really like that there's this great rail at the top that you can really hang on to and we can lash things to. So I think these are gonna be really functional, really easy to replace. Uh, Evan did an amazing job when he cut out the brackets. I couldn't be happier with those. And while everyone else has been working in the boat and on the boat, I've been working quite hard on getting the hull fared. We did the first rough fare on it, and then I've been going back over it since, and a couple other folks have been giving a hand. Uh, but we've got the lion's share of the rough fare done, which means it's almost time to start caulking and swelling. Aaron soaked the ground underneath the boat, and we're starting to get that saturated in preparation of swelling. So things are, things are coming along. It's been really amazing having such a huge crew here. Yeah. Thanks to uh, Turner's Club out east and some volunteers, the dead eyes are ready for their finish. So initially I cut these as octagon blanks, soaked them in linseed oil to try to stabilize the live oak a little bit because it does like to check and move. Uh, and they, Turner's Club turned them down and laser engraved Arabella into each of them. And then some volunteers rounded them out so that when we put the lines through, there's not a sharp edge. So the next thing we need to do is put some finish on these and I'm gonna make a very, very basic version of boat soup. So we're gonna use some raw linseed oil and we're gonna use some pine tar and this gaudy orange bucket here. And we're gonna just soak these dead eyes in a mixture of the linseed oil and the tar. And we're gonna take them out, let them dry and put them back in and get a bunch of coats on them and what's going to happen is the, lince, or the pine tar is going to make the linseed oil darker and eventually these eyes will turn 
pretty much black, which will match the rigging. Uh, and I think that will look very nice. So we're going for a black finish on these, which is why we're using the unfiltered linseed oil and why we're adding the pine tar. So let's mix it up and make some soup. Yeah. It's a natural topical antiseptic that retains hoof moisture, thereby making the hoof elastic and flexible while promoting new hoof growth. So obviously this pine tar is uh, marketed for the equine industry. So I'm just gonna add all of this because I want these dead eyes to get as black as they can get. So we're gonna go real heavy on the pine tar. This stuff is super potent smelling and it smells really good in our opinion. And if you would like to get some smell o vision and know what this pine tar smells like, Kirby Paint Company, they sell a pine tar soap. Um, and I highly recommend it. So if you wanna know what the pine tar smells like, head over to the Kirby website, pick up some pine tar soap and let them know that we sent you. Get all that good, good pine tar. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of varieties of boat soup, and you can find all sorts of recipes for them with raw linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, pine tar, turpentine, Japan dryer, kerosene. People put all sorts of stuff in them. Um, and there's all sorts of different versions and varieties depending on your location. They all work pretty well as a wood preservative, and they all eventually turn the wood uh, some version of grayish black. soup. Do not eat the dead eye soup. All right. Now we just let it sit. And we'll take them out and let them dry and throw them back in and take them out and let them dry and throw them back in and do it as many times and until it launches we can. And with 84, 85 days remaining, something like that, um, it's only gonna be a few times. Okay. It's just gonna keep soaking in because the ground underneath it's really dry. So basically I just fill it up. Yeah, but it's gonna start running away. So you're gonna have to kind of keep doing what you're doing with moving it around. Oh, okay. This is a really good day.